I have actually recorded this video three times now just because I'm really worried about causing offence and there is no offence intended at all. It's just, you know, personal taste, personal preference and um, if any of you are, are big fans of any of these brands or if any of you own any of these items, I am not suggesting at all that your uh, taste or your items are bad. Um, my style is actually quite, in a way, quite boring, so that might be why as well I feel the way I do. But either way, I hope you enjoy watching. I'm actually wearing a dress, but I feel like it looks a bit weird. It doesn't look weird in real, and I've got a thermal top underneath it. Anyway, no one cares. I've had quite a few of you over the course of the last year really saying, Sophie, why is it that you always have your favourite brands that you buy from? And it's typically Chanel and Dior got quite into Prada recently. Anyway, it's a good question. And specifically, I've had some of you asking about particular brands. So you're saying, why don't you buy more from Louis Vuitton or Gucci? There was one other, no, two others. Hermes, I've spoken about that before, but I'll give it a brief mention. And also Bottega. So why don't I? Well, first of all, can I just start by saying a disclaimer? that in no way is this meant to offend anyone. We all have our personal tastes, things we like, things we do not. And I've got things that some of you think are ghastly and that's fine. And anything that I say in this is not, not a personal attack on you. I'm not saying that your bag is ugly. Let's begin with Louis Vuitton. Couple of reasons why I don't buy from there that often. I'm gonna start with the biggest reason for me. And the biggest reason is that I feel they have gone mad with making a billion designs of bag. When I went in there at Christmas, I was honestly, I haven't been in there for ages and I was really overwhelmed by the amount of designs. And some of the designs look a bit um, like you know when you cast out a bunch of fishing lines and you see which one gets bites on it and then you discontinue the others and you just run with the one that does well. I don't know whether that that is true but when I went in there certainly I was overwhelmed by styles that I wouldn't class as classic because they haven't been out long enough. If you take Chanel for example, they've kind of, they're boring but they're classically boring, they're safe boring you can buy something and you can dig it out in years to come and they still make it. If you take Chanel, they have sort of five or six key long-term classic bags in the lineup. So they've got the classic flap, the boy bag, Gabrielle, Chanel 19, and I feel like there's another one. Is it a tote bag? They always have that small range and you can get it in the classic colors and then every so often, uh, seasonally, you can get them in, in different shades as well. With Louis Vuitton, and I have an example here, I feel in a way that their, I don't know what their classic bags are anymore. I feel that in a way I could end up buying something that's a one-off, something that is, I'm trying to describe it. I don't know if you know what I mean. I know that it's nice to have choice, but when I went in there, I was just overwhelmed. I almost wanted to say to the person serving us, and I nearly did, I felt like I wanted to say, what's long-term? There's loads of different things going on here. You've got pouches and bags hanging off straps, crossbody straps. You've got different versions of the logo floating around. You've got um, bags like this, which I love, by the way. I'm a contradiction. Bags like this, which are weird. What are your classic bags? What can I buy now? And I know you, Louis Vuitton aren't gonna go, do you know, we made that, that didn't do very well. Let's pull that and put out something else that might do better. That's how it feels to me, at least. I'm personally, not everyone's the same as me, but I'm personally more drawn to classic, styles that never change and they come out in seasonal colors that's so i normally end up with like loads of the same bag but just in different colors and finishes it's boring and it's just my personal taste and not everyone's the same but i like that i can go and pick a bag off the shelf 
and know that in future it doesn't matter that it's in hot pink or whatever it's in a style that they've that's been around for decades and it still will be around in the future so that's one of the reasons the second reason as well is I was actually talking to my mum about this uh, back in early December because she's really into her bags and she used to be really into Louis Vuitton and actually one of her first Louis Vuitton bags which she still has now is a no way you know the kind of uh, bucket bag with the drawstring handle she bought that back in the late 90s and at the time it was very exclusive and then the sort of fake market really picked up and that was the point where my mum said with this monogram she went off it because seeing fakes everywhere it's not so much the fake that's the problem it's that exclusivity that you lose when you start seeing something all over the place my mum also said that she'd sometimes see someone in public with a bag that was in this print let's say but the bag had didn't exist. The bag was in a style that Louis Vuitton had never never made. And so you looked at it, and if you knew, if you were familiar with the brand, you'd look at it and you'd go, yeah, that's fake, because they never made that. And now they're at a point where, for me personally, someone who isn't that au fait with their designs, I might look at one of their designs and, it, and question whether it's authentic as well. You know in the new uh, Game On collection, a good example of this, I saw, don't kill me, I saw the heart-shaped bag from that collection. Where did I see it? So I ate, oh, I tell you where I saw it. It was on, you know those pages on Instagram where it's sellers that sell fakes and you can WhatsApp them. So I'd come across this page because I was scrolling my Instagram homepage and if you keep scrolling past all of your, every, everyone that you follow who's done an update, you get to this section at the bottom where it's people you don't follow and posts. And there was this picture that came up of that bag. I thought it was fake. And it was only when it came out a few weeks later and I actually saw it that I thought, oh my God, they actually did make that bag. I just want to come on here and say that in no way am I cussing this bag. I actually think it's really cute and very sweet and I really like the look of it. But the point I was trying to make is that when I first saw it, because there are such an array of different designs from LV. When I first saw it on Instagram, I assumed that it was a faker making a fake shape in the LV monogram, but a style that didn't exist. You know, some sometimes I've seen that they do that. Sometimes I see bags that in a style that have never been made before, but they're in the, the whatever the brand is, signature look, uh, kind of monogram print. And that's how you can kind of tell. And that's what I thought in this instance before I realized the collection it was in. Now moving on to Gucci, why don't I buy from there? It comes back down to personal preference as well. Louis Vuitton is a brand that I actually do like. I don't love the monogram. Um, by the way, briefly to talk about this, thank you to everyone who helped me with this bag back in December because I, I, I didn't know, this is my first Louis Vuitton bag in a long time. In this print, nearly 10 years but this was a shape that I saw and I really liked it and I know it's an acquired taste I know it's really weird but I can't put my finger on it there's something about it I like and it's it is exactly what I've just said there it's a weird one-off shape that is weird and it's not classic and they might not continue it this is a really I feel like this is a really good example of bizarre but I, li I, I like it I can't what can I say but to everyone who helped me with this and said don't change it for the Verney because the Verney looks great when it's clean but finger marks get all over it it looks dull really quickly some of you said that on yours the top layer had kind of gone a bit tacky and sticky where the um, top layer of paint and starts to break down so thanks to everyone who suggested this back to Gucci I don't especially love their bags or their clothes. They are. They have a very sp uh, specific style, which is quite loud, quite colourful. Lots of prints. The GG monogram pattern. Um, it, I'm. I'm the way I dress. I'm quite boring, really. I'm in a way. Would you say it's conservative? Possibly. Everything is quite plain, and 
their styling i do like some of it they had a really nice jumpsuit that came out last year or the year before but a lot of their stuff's quite quite um eccentric now if i show you this which i just need to get one thing i do quite like them for is their shoes and belts and scarves their accessories are so well made i'm going to show you a pair of shoes don't judge me these are from 2010 it's these these are um that's what they look like on the front they've got a small platform here this actually is a really good example of what i talk about with trend items whereby it's not that i have a problem wearing them it's that they kind of get to a point where they start to become quite difficult to work in with an outfit if you know what i mean they're very 2010 they'll come back in again i do wear them but yes it's just to mention that anyway their shoes and their scarves in particular i have got another scarf that i've shown you quite a lot over the last month it i bought it in 20 2009 actually and it's stunning it's in such good condition it hasn't pulled you know a lot of these expensive scarves that you buy they pull all over the place and they don't last and they're really not worth the money but their stuff's really good but yeah when it comes to their clothing and with their bags they are a bit too loud for me i think is a good way of putting it bottega before i move on to um hermes which i'll finish on with bottega like their clothes don't love anything so far enough to actually go and buy it their um their bags however i'm going to reference the the main ones at the moment which is the chain pouch bag and the cassette bag they're nice looking bags but i think they're too expensive in my opinion that's why i wouldn't buy one i don't love them enough to buy and that's a big thing for me uh, I, ha I have to really like it, not just kind of like it a little bit, I have to really, really like it. But also, there, the bigger pouch bag, I think that's £2,800, it's nearly 3000 And for a bag that's that new, and for a bag that, in my opinion, is really trend, I really feel, particularly with that chunky handle, the chain handle, love the look of it, but I just can't imagine that being long term. And for a unless money was no object for a bag for a bag like that i personally wouldn't spend that money let me know what you think about that i know a lot of you have written to me and you said that you've got it and it's really lovely quality but let me know what you think about the pricing on it i mean my god the price have you seen the prices this year on these bags whoa they have gone through the roof it some of these bag prices and they do it on the sly as well that since december and now some of these prices i've done a double take at some of them it's crazy and then the final brand which i'm only going to briefly talk about because i've spoken about it before and if you want the full story i'm going to link to the video below but it's hermes why don't i own and buy anything from there two main reasons one extra one which kind of just adds to it first of all they are classic to to the nth degree they're one of those bags that you're going to buy it and you're always going to be able to pull it out of your wardrobe and wear it it it's going to hold its money it's not just going to hold its money it's going to make you money however i don't love them enough to want to go and spend that kind of money on them the only one that i would consider which i quite like the look of is the constance bag but I don't want it enough to go and spend the money. So that's the first thing. Just honestly, I, I, you like what you like and you don't like what you don't like. And for me, they're not a style that I love. Secondly, a lot of you have told me that there's, there's games you have to play to get these bags, unless you're really in there with the brand. And I've never tried to play the game because I don't really have a desire for them in the first place. Some of you have said it's actually pretty easy. Others of you have said it isn't. But if I'm going to spend £7,000 plus or whatever they are 
I don't really want to have to grovel for it. And then the third reason, which is one that I've spoken about twice now, but I'll really briefly go over it. If you want really in depth, it's gonna be in that video. This isn't a reason why I wouldn't buy one, but it's kind of part of, part of the reason why I think if I did really want one, I would now be slightly, what's the word? Put off, but had an experience when I tried to go and buy a belt in 2019 and it was at the Harrods concession and the experience wasn't great. Uh, I, I, as I say, I just went there to buy a belt and the, um, the person who was helping us, we were in there for over an hour and the person went off to get the belt. Anyway, they didn't go off to get the belt. They went after about 20 minutes of sitting there waiting we looked and he was helping someone else at that point. <laughs> um, and we were just sat by the till and my husband was really annoyed at that point as well because we had to wait so long and he said, it's only a belt and we're going like, let's get out of here. Anyway, as we went to leave, I can't remember. Anyway, someone, someone else came to help us with this belt and it was just, it was not a, um, a nice experience. It, it wasn't a fun experience, put it that way. And so, that's another reason why I, th I remember thinking at the time, oh, if it's like this to buy a belt, just imagine what it's like to buy a bag. Now, I don't know, because I've never tried, and that's just the Harrods concession. And it might just be that I got someone when they were having an off day, or it's not necessarily representative of what it's gonna be like everywhere. So that didn't, that hasn't been the reason why I haven't bought but it's just kind of part of the reason why I think even if I did decide to buy, I would kind of be apprehensive in terms of thinking, well, that happened with the belt. If it's gonna happen with the bag, I'm not in the mood for it. I will link to that Hermes video below for any of you who, um, you know, you want a bit more info on it. Um, so I'll put details to that below. Thank you though for everyone who asked a question because I thought this was actually quite a good, um, quite a good topic to talk about. So thanks for that. I will see you in the next video.